everyone, welcome back. This is Laura and today I'm sharing my Love From Lizzie 10 Cards 1 Kit video using the September Super Kit. Let's jump right in. So for this first card I have a grey card base and I'm covering it with this piece of paper that's been cut to be ever so slightly smaller. All of the cards I'm making today are 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches, which is a standard A2 size. So I've got this cauldron and I've just marked out the top and the bottom because I want to make a Chibitronics circuit. So I'm using this copper tape and then I'll add a small LED light sticker and a battery and that will enable me to make this card light up. So I do have some more detailed videos showing how to make these circuits and this right here is my top tip to make sure that you burnish the uh, copper tape. That is the number one reason why these fail. <laughs> So you can see there everything's working perfectly and I've poked some holes into the cauldron to allow that light to shine through more easily, just kind of where the, where the potion would be. I've layered that up with two layers of double sided sticky tape and that just makes sure that the battery will not kind of be engaged just when this card is sat there and you have to actually press it to activate. So to go with this light up cauldron I've got one of the decoupage witches and I'm just layering it up using some double sided foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesive. And can we just take a minute to appreciate the stamping on my nails? This was the first time I'd ever tried some stamping and I've got some little Halloween images on there and some black holographic nail varnish, but unfortunately it only lasts for a couple cards. So there you can see it in the dark, there really is a great effect from those little LED stickers. Okay, so for our next card I'm going to use this stencil. I love this stencil. I mentioned in my unboxing it's got kind of a, a Tim Burton-y vibe for me. I really like it. And I stuck it down with some tape to make a hinge and then I stuck down the rest of the edges just to kind of hold that in place because I actually want to get two impressions out of this. So I've got one there where the spider web is left white and then I flipped the stencil over and pressed it onto another piece of watercolour cardstock and that leaves kind of almost like a stamp image of this. So you can see there when I went to add my double sided tape on the back of this piece I actually tore the edge but rather than throw that away I just changed my design a little bit and I stuck this down at a slight angle and then trimmed off any of the excess so that torn piece is no longer on the card. I've also got this super cute little kind of pom pom spider guy and I've coloured him in using some alcohol markers. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the purple peel offs or the mirror lilac peel offs to just um, go along the edges of where those two pieces of paper meet and then again just as a decorative element slightly further down. So after all of the effect of the brusher with all those different colours and this is just the black brusher that I'd used here but because it's not completely saturated and mixed you can see all of the different colours that are inside that powder so after kind of all of that effect on the spider web piece I wanted to keep this pretty simple and I think that the peel offs work really well when you get them straight um, just to add a little bit of interest on the back. So I'm adding some adhesive to the back of my little spider I love this thing, it just looks like a little kind of a, a pom-pom or um, there's those things from Harry Potter, I forget what they're called, but there's like a little a little pet that I think Fred and George in, invent. Um, maybe it's like a, I don't know, it's got it's something with a, with a spell on it and it comes to life and you can buy them in their shop. It reminds me of those, but I can't remember the name of them. If you know, comment down below and remind me. Um, and I'm just adding here some of the silver ribbon. And just tying a little bow and sticking that on top because I am not very good at tying bows directly on my card so that's my cheat for getting a bow on the card. Okay so this next one I've stamped the little one of the little ghouly girls and I'm actually going to alter her slightly. Now I was inspired to have her look a little bit like Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas and so I'm adding some additional kind of stitches along her legs and some stitches along her dress and I've coloured her in to kind of match the colours of that character. So the whole time I was colouring this I had Miss You by Blink-182 stuck in my head because it has that one lyric where it says uh, we can live like Jack and Sally if you want or you can always find me, we'll have Halloween on Christmas. Um, I'm not going to sing it but hopefully you know the song. And I've just gone ahead and used my coordinating die to cut out this girl which I'm in love with having the coordinating dies. It is so much easier when you're creating. 
So if you're familiar with The Nightmare Before Christmas, you'll know that Sally creates a potion in part of the film and there's a couple different ingredients that she uses and I wanted to recreate those on these potion bottles so I just wiped off the text that's already in the centre of the stamp and just stamped those down and coloured them in and added my own so I could have the correct ingredients. Maybe it was a little bit extra to go to this step to kind of make sure I had that but I wanted to stay true to the kind of um, film theme of this card. So I'm going to go ahead and stick down this black skull paper onto a black card base. Again, just leaving a gap around the edges. I really like that kind of a look on the, on the card. You'll notice that it's something that I return to a lot. I like to just have that edge. And then I cut this piece out, and I've actually cut it a little bit small, but because of the placement of my Sally, um, it doesn't actually matter because you can't see that piece. So I'm just using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to stick this down and then I'll go ahead and decide where I want to put the potion bottles. The three ingredients, if you can't read them on screen, are Frog's Breath, that's the green one, Worm's Wall, which is the brown one, and Deadly Nightshade, which is purple. So I'm sticking two of them flat to the card and then the one in the centre, the Deadly Nightshade, I'm just going to go ahead and pop that up using some more of those scrapbook adhesive foam squares. I do really love these, you'll see them in almost all of my videos. Um, I like to get the multi-packs which come with the two different sizes, the small one here and then the larger ones as well. I really do enjoy using those. So I've got this Candy Apple Cutie sentiment and I just coloured in the heart using an alcohol marker. And then to finish this off, I wanted to add some texture detail to her bow, so I'm just using the Nouveau to do that. I actually really like how this bow looks and I think I would actually buy and wear this if I saw it in real life. Maybe I'll have to recreate a human sized version rather than this stamped version on the card. Okay, moving on to the next card, I've stamped the witch on a broomstick on some watercolour paper and I'm covering her in masking fluid because that's going to hold up really well to the brush out. Once that's completely dry, I started to sprinkle on a couple of different colours of brush out just to create kind of some interesting colours in the background. And I've sped this up because it did take a while. I was allowing this to dry before each layer. And then once I was happy with the yellows and the purples, I started to add some black just to kind of really build up that night sky. I'm dabbing off any of the excess just to get rid of some of the moisture and help with the drying process. And then once I'm happy with that background, I will flick on some white spots to make the stars. And then finally, I want to make kind of a, a magical trail from the broomstick using the pearl powder. Once all of that's dry, you can either take your finger or an adhesive remover and just peel away that masking fluid. I think it's pretty spectacular whenever you peel away kind of a, a mask or a stencil, and this masking fluid in particular is really fun to work with. So apologies for how sped up that was, I'm going to do some explaining. <laughs> so I've been having some awful problems with my laptop, unfortunately I do have a new one on the way so this should be the only video that's affected, um, however I've been having some real difficulties with my computer and I'm having to do this voiceover almost in one entire take which isn't something I usually do and the only way that I could manage to edit this video um, it was it was very tricky, so there's a few spots where I've had to speed it up where I wouldn't normally have moved it that fast, but it was the only way I could keep it kind of under 30 minutes for you all. So while I was blithering on explaining my poor editing and poor voiceover for this video, I went ahead and coloured the witch and added her onto a grey background, and then I've just stamped Trick or Treat and I'm embossing this using the Love From Lizzie Silver Dollar Embossing Powder which is my favourite silver embossing powder that I've ever used. You'll notice that my camera had a little bit of difficulty focusing on this magical background. It was kind of like there was some, I don't know, there was some blocker between the totally magicalness of this background piece and my camera. They just didn't want to talk to each other. I think my camera felt overwhelmed by the galaxy gorgeousness. So I stuck that, I'm trying to get it focused there, and then I stuck it down onto this lilac piece, and just at the end it snapped into focus. Okay, so if you are a Jennifer Maguire fan, you may be following what's happening here, you may recognise these pieces. I followed one of her tutorials, and I will link it in the description below. She recently shared a card that she called a peekaboo card, and it's essentially a card with an aperture or a window cut into it, and when you open and close the card, the image in the window changes. And I felt like the Love From Lizzie kit would be a great chance for me to try this kind of card, so I'm not going through all of the details as to how to make this card, 
but Jennifer Maguire has a wonderful video that is approximately 20 minutes long so it goes into all of the detail that you would need to create one of these cards and you can certainly follow along and recreate this look really quick and easy using your Love From Lizzie surpri uh, supplies. So the supplies that I'm using here is one of the patterned papers and also the cat and some of the peel-offs on the front and then what I'm working on here will be the inside of the card and I'm just stamping using some Versamark ink so I can heat emboss in white the Happy Halloween uh, sentiment, <laughs> I almost forgot what they were called and then I'll heat set that with my heat tool. I really like the look of a bold white sentiment on black cardstock and you can get rid of that excess embossing um, anti-static powder just using a microfiber cloth once your embossing powder has dried. So you melt it, you want to wait a couple of minutes until it's not warm anymore before you wipe over it with your microfiber cloth because you will smudge that embossing powder and that's definitely not what you want for a sentiment. Okay, so I took the back piece here and added some double-sided sticky tape and then I'm going to stick the middle of the card to the back piece and you have kind of this Z fold. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the um, front of the card <laughs> to the front of the middle section. As I say, there is an in-depth tutorial on how to make this that I will have linked in the video description. So you can definitely go ahead and watch that to see exactly how you put this together and also all of the measurements. So I'm just going to fold this piece up and then you'll see that I've got these two little windows and as I open and close the card, a piece of that front section slides across and allows me to have a space to have a different image. So I'll go ahead and decorate those now, again just using some of the decoupage pieces and also the sentiment. So to add these pieces, I've die cut a couple of circles from the black pearlized card and I'm going to go ahead and stick my peekaboo. I felt like this was the perfect sentiment for this card considering it's a peekaboo card technique. And so I'm going to put that peekaboo on the back piece here and that will be what I see when the card is kind of in this neutral position. And then when I open it up, that peekaboo is going to magically change and it will change into this gorgeous bat. I love this bat, I think he's so sweet. I'm just holding that piece behind, I'm trying to figure out exactly where I need him to be so I get to see his cute little face and I don't kind of chop too much of that off. I decided to add one of the bows onto his, onto his head or her head, whichever it may be, because I just thought it looked really sweet on top of there. So I'm just kind of holding that in place and pressing it down where I want it to be and then here is the magic. Is that not the coolest thing? Um, Jennifer had a really good technique that this catches just a little bit, but if you apply some scotch tape, it just runs really smoothly, so you can open and close that and switch the peekaboo to the bat. So here I'm realizing that I've still got some of that anti-static powder on my background, and I'm just using a dry microfiber cloth just to buff any of that away, and that kind of brings back the true black color of this card. I couldn't stop playing with this. I played with it for quite a while. It's like when you make a shaker card and you just can't help it. Okay, onto this next one. I'm using the Wicked die cut and this is one of the recommended add-on products and I've cut that out of a piece of paper and added double-sided uh, sticky tape or foam tape rather so this will be raised off the background of this card and then I'm going to go ahead and trace the outer edges of this piece so I can understand exactly where I need to cover the background to make the colour pop through this window, or this word window. So I'm just drawing that and kind of squaring it off, making it, um, making it more rectangular. And then, I'm not going to lie, this took me quite some time. I decided, like a crazy person, to separate the colours of my sequins. And I started doing it by separating them into these dishes and then I kind of realised I was making double the amount of work for myself. And so instead I just picked out the corresponding colours that I needed. And I decided to go with a mix of gold and then the lilac and then the black. And you'll see when I hold this piece over the top, it kind of really applies a really great contrast around the black. A relatively good contrast over the gold, but then the lilac I think was a little bit of a mistake. I think if I was to remake this card, which it's going to take me a little while before I'm comfortable separating sequins again, <laughs> but if I was to remake this card, I think I'd go with just gold and black, or maybe all black or all gold, because I think it's ever so slightly difficult to read that wicked sentiment. 
I feel like I know that that's what it says because I, I cut it out and I knew what I was expecting. But I think if you received this card and didn't know that it said wicked, you might struggle a little bit around the middle of the word. So I've added down one of the added down, stuck down one of the potions. And again, my camera is struggling just a little bit to focus. There was definitely some kind of magic going on. But I think it looks kind of cool seeing the, the shine of the sequins when it's out of focus. So don't worry, you'll be able to see what that finished card looked like at the end of this video. So for this next card, I've got one of these striped pieces, and then I've cut the skull paper to kind of, I'm going to call it a cheese wedge, um, to a cheese wedge kind of a shape. And I'm going to outline that shape with some Love From Lizzie peel-offs again, because they are addictive and you can't help it. So I think they add a really nice uh, amount of shine onto this card and yeah, I'm just, I'm addicted to using them. I am desperate to see holographic either embossing powder or peel-offs, that's, that's what's on my wish list. And Lizzie tends to be really accommodating where she can, so if you've got something on your crafty wish list, do let her know because, I mean, there's been, there's been a couple things that people have asked for and they've arrived, so I'll keep my fingers crossed for the holographic. <laughs> So I've took another one of the decoupage pieces and this little girl, this little kind of ghouly girl with her eyes kind of closed, she looks sassy to me. So I decided she fit best with the witch please sentiment, which I just love, it kind of cracks me up. So um, I felt she was perfect for this. She just looks like she's she's had enough of you and she's just rolling her eyes and looking down or closing her eyes and she's like, witch please. So I felt like that worked perfectly. And I'm adding that sentiment with, again, some more of my favourite foam squares. I'm going to go ahead and stick this down onto a piece of the pink pearlised card. I didn't make the entire card out of the pink pearlised piece. That was a lot of alliteration. Um, but I just used a panel <laughs> and then stuck that down onto a white card base. And for some reason on this card, I don't know why I didn't do it on all of them, but for this one in particular, I wanted to stamp the inside with the Happy Halloween sentiment. So to do that, I'm just going to use my yeah, Versafine reason, Onyx Black ink. Sure if you've I seen my Black Ink 101 video, which one talks one about the different properties of particularly black inks, and which ones that I favour for different jobs or different purposes, you'll know that my Versafine Onyx Black is a favourite for sentiments. So I'm going to go ahead and use some more of that Tombow Mono and just stick this down to the front of the card base. And that's this one done. I'm not sure what card we're up to at this point. I can't press pause and count, but we're moving on. Okay, so this one here, I decided to use some more of the decoupage pieces. And I've actually also used a Lawn Fawn die to create this kind of comic book peekaboo window uh, frame. That's the one. That's what I'm trying to say. And I've got the skulls and the sentiment and the, the kind of bat girl and the spell book. And I'm just popping each of those inside the frame. And then I'll go ahead and add some of the lift up sections as well. And I think this is really nice just to have a kind of interactive, interesting kind of... Um, it reminds me of like a picture book. Like, an, you know, with the different interactive elements where you pull a tab and something slides or you lift a window and something's in there. Um, I just think it makes a kind of really interesting card front. And then just to decorate those flaps, I'm using some of the floral elements that were included and also adding another bow. Okay, so for the next card, I'm pretty sure this is card nine. I feel like I made this ninth. And I'm going ahead and adding some double-sided sticky tape using the grid marks on my background just to create some nice even lines. And then I'm going to cover each of those with the black ribbon. This is a really great way to add your ribbon because nothing can kind of move or shift around and it's an instant hold because it's a dry adhesive. Once I've trimmed off the edges, I'll just pick this piece up and then just fold those edges behind and you get a really nice clean edge to this piece. I've also cut some of my pattern paper down and added some black foam onto the back of it and I'm just using some more of my glue. You can see it's kind of it's fighting me and um, it kind of pretends like it's run out and you have to give it a good old shake and kind of get that glue right to the bottom and then you're able to get a little bit more out of it before you have to throw it away. So I'm deciding where to put this. I decided to put it slightly higher than I originally placed it on my card panel but that's okay I just wiped off the excess glue and you can't tell. I also rounded the corners of this piece using my corner chomper and then I'm going to go ahead and add some floral elements 
And this particular card is actually a kind of, a, I mean it could be a wedding card, it could be a Valentine's card, um, but with slightly a darker twist because it's using these skulls and I really like how this one uh, turned out. I'm not sure which one's my favourite this month, I think I really like all of them because I really like the theme and the colour palette, um, but this one I think is particularly interesting. I think I might keep this one and maybe use it for Valentine's Day next February. So I'm adding a little bow to one of the skulls, the one that has the longer eyelashes, and then I actually printed out this sentiment, till death do us part, which I think with those skulls works really well. And then this little spider guy, I, um, I, I felt like it looked a little bit like a, a wedding a wedding guest with its kind of, um, with its hat on, so I felt like that worked really well for this. I just wanted to add a little bit of colour to the skulls, so I'm just using my alcohol markers direct on the wood and just colouring inside of the eyes and then also inside of the nose and just kind of overlining those eyelashes to really help them stand out. As I say, I think this is kind of interesting as a wedding card, particularly with the with the sentiment and with the spider kind of looking like it's a wedding guest with its hat, but I think I'm actually going to keep this one and use it as a Valentine's card for Darren. So I'll go ahead and stick that down onto my card base, and that card is finished. Okay, so we're on to the final one. We've almost made it through this video, which if you'd seen my computer struggles, you would understand. I'm very grateful that we are almost there, and I'm very grateful for anyone who has stuck around with me, so thank you very much. And I've just gone ahead and coloured in my cauldron black, and you'll notice that there was a section of my cauldron missing. I actually just used a craft knife and cut that out. I just worked really slow, kind of chipping away layer by layer, and it was actually relatively easy to cut through that. So I'm just adding the gold spiderweb pattern paper onto a lilac background, and I'm just figuring out exactly where I want everything. Now I went ahead and snapped the broomstick, which if you've seen my unboxing, I mentioned that it is really strong, but you can break it. And I've actually just trimmed down the back of the um, of the handle, just to make it a little a little bit thinner, so it can sit inside the cauldron. I actually wanted to make this a moving element, so I'm stabilising it with a piece of paper, and then I'm going to poke a hole through it, and then I'm going to attach a split pin, and that will just allow me to move this piece back and forth. Once I've got my little back girl stuck down, I'll be able to hide my little um, split pin mechanism, which is really just as simple as I poke a hole through this piece here, and then attach my split pin to another piece of scrap paper, and then I'll hide all of that behind the cauldron. I'll actually stick that bit flat to the card, and then the cauldron's raised up on some foam tape, and that just allows some space for the movement, so it kind of looks like the, um, the kind of fancy wooden spoon that would be used to stir a potion and I finish this off with the spooky sentiment. Now for that particular card, I do think I'd hand deliver it because I think if you apply too much pressure onto the mixing spoon, it would snap because the edge of that cauldron is quite thick. To finish this off, I added some black Wink of Stella pen. I rarely get to use this, so I was really pleased to use the black over the top of the cauldron and it adds some nice subtle shine. Okay, time for the recap. We're almost there. <laughs> So I'm just going to run through each of these cards really quickly. We've got the light up cauldron, then we've got our little spider on our stamped stencil web, and then we've got our Sally inspired, she's almost kind of Disney bounding, I don't know if any of you are familiar with that term, I wasn't until recently. One of my friends introduced me to it and we're actually flying off to Disney tomorrow where she has definitely roped me into doing some Disney bounding. So the Sally character is a stamp that is kind of dressed up in an outfit inspired by Sally. Then we've got our Trick or Treat Witch, our Wicked Secret, and then we've got the Peekaboo card inspired by Jennifer McGuire. We've got this Peekaboo window from uh, Lawn Fawn with the Lawn Fawn die on the front. And then we have <laughs> this one that really makes me smile, the kind of um, Halloween themed love card, <laughs> I'm going to call that one. And then we've got the uh, sassy pants, we've got witch please, with this little sassy girl. And then finally, the moving cauldron, with this little bat and the spooky sentiment. 
Thank you so much for joining me today and for sticking through my video. Again, apologies that the editing is a little bit rough and that the voiceover isn't as crisp as usual. I did have to go through this with the best that I could get my computer to do. If you want to see some more videos from me, you can go ahead and click on the links on the screen right now or click on the logo to subscribe to this channel. That's all from me. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.